Welcome everyone. Today I have a new Diablo 4 video, and today we'll be looking into the Jewel build for Diablo 4. So in this video, we'll have a look at the Druid for level 50 and also 15 Reno. And the focus of today's Druid will be the ultimate Werewolf critical and also attack speed build. A Werewolf will have a particular choice of the Spirit Brooms, which will become very powerful with higher critical chances and also better critical damage. So we'll talk about this at the start of the video. We'll also be going through some of the skills of the, of the build and also some of the codexes of the build. Finally, at the end of the video, we also have a look at the potential for open beta level 25 plus 3 level of Reno level 28 Druid. It doesn't have to be level 28, it can be level 25 Druid. But unfortunately, we won't have the Druid specialization in open beta to test it out. So coming over to our notes, we'll start with the summary. Now, because the Druid specialization is a spirit bomb, so how does that work is the Druid class will actually be able to, you know, do a quest line in a different zone that is not in open beta after level 15. And the Druid can acquire up to four different spirit animals, the deer, the eagle, the wolf, and also the snake. And depending on the, the different animals you acquire, and the different links you decide to go with them. After unlocking all four of the animals, you can pick one link to have two special benefits. For example, over here, I'm going with Eagle for the increased critical chance and also increased critical damage. You can also go with other ones to increase you know, maximum energy, having damage reduction or increased storm. So it's a bit of flexibility with animals, and this will also affect your play and also game style and also your build into the game. Now for our particular build, we'll be going with the spirit, spirit animal, which is going to be the eagle, which is going to be the focus of the build. So we we'll start with the spirit animals, and I'll quickly give you guys a summary. The deer is not that much of uh, you know a big plus. We'll be going with a thorn just to be getting a bit of increased damage. You can go with high energy, you can go with increased damage to elites, or you can go with reduced duration to crop control. Those are not that massive unless in the later games, you really get in crowd control, then you can change the thorn into crowd control. I just wonder with a bit of offense. For the ego, we ideally want to get as much critical chance and also critical damage, and those two are perfect. So here we go with a critical chance and also critical damage. Maximum health and also attack speed. I guess we could go with attack speed, that's also beneficial. As for the wolf, we go with a pack leader. So every time with critical chance lands on the enemy, we have a chance of 20% to resetting one of our skills cooldown. And this is the companion skill. So later we'll look into the skills and you'll be able to see the companion skills, which activates your companion to focus attack. Finally, as for the snake, we'll go with this particular passive, which allows you to gain 3% of your maximum life as healing when your critical strike hits the enemy while shift shifting. Our major focus of the build will be ship shifting, and this will be, you know, ideal for the build, right? You'll be quitting a lot, you'll be doing critical damage, and you also heal when you critical strike. So it's like lifesteal for like maximum of your life. This is really powerful with all the photo fights and also durability of the Druid. Now over here for the skill choices of the Druid, I'll quickly give you guys a rundown. We'll have the notes available in the description as well. So we'll be going with the basic skill for Claw, which goes into the Werewolf ship shift. All of the skills will focus on a werewolf, but we'll talk about later the option to go with a werebear for the ultimate for higher damage for the passive. As for the core skill, we can go with shred. And for the defensive skill, we go with blood horn for healing and also increased attack speed. For the companions, we'll go with wolves for increased damage and also critical damage. For the worth skill, we'll go with rabies because we can you know, do a bit of AoE and heal a little more and also go into a werewolf state. Ultimate skill will go with Lactate Rate, which allows us to attack uh, many, many times. And this is the Werewolf state, which potentially deals the most damage single target. And as for the Capstone, we go with like the guaranteed critical and also increased critical damage with Looping Federosity. So this focus guarantees us pretty much have a really high critical chance, critical damage, life steal, and also sustain. Now coming over to our skill tree for the level 50 Druid. The skill will start with the core skill will be Claw. The Claw will be going for level 1, and after that we'll go in Chain of Claw for attack speed, and also Wild Claw for the increase of critical chance and also critical damage. Notice that this skill have a really high critical chance, and this combined with that when you crit, you gain 3% of your maximum life back, this is actually a healing spell as well. So the basic skill not only gives you generation of your energy, which with high attack speed, and also it heals you because it crits. Now, there is alternative. We can perk into the 
bit of shift shift. And Maul over here does have some nice gain of fortify and also provides us with a bit of knockback we can make use of. We'll talk about this in the later stage of the build because once you ship shift into different animals of different forms, you actually gain an increased attack for the other form, which is about 15%. Now for the core skill of the Druid, we'll go with Shred, and Shred will be a major combo for the we Werewolf. So shift shifting into three combo attacks, and we'll be dashing towards enemies, and we'll deal quite nice of a damage. Shift shift will also go with upgrade of shift shift, which increase attack speed and also heals, you know, as we attack. And after that, shift shift will also have the increase of critical chance, and this is also good for the combo of the build. Now, one thing I do want to highlight as we go through the skill tree is that we'll be looking into getting more Fortify. For example, the aspect of Retaliation allows us to deal more damage when we have Fortify health, and this will also empower Shred. And we also can do Overpower damage with higher base HP and also higher Fortify, which does bonus damage in terms of Overpower. So the Druid build will also be very durable with Fortify, and this will make us stronger with our core skill, which is Shred. And we also get additional perks in the future. Now, some of the passive which will be interesting for the equip build is that we'll go with close range attacks, and this will give us another 9% bonus of critical chance, and also we'll gain movement speed in the werewolf state. And this also persists after leaving the state, which means our build will be very fast and very speedy, which is good for most of the build. Now, some of the interesting passive over here is we can be going one perk of Heart of Wild, going to three perk of Wild Impulse to increase the core scope by another 30%. The downside is you do lose more energy because it costs 15% more energy, but it's definitely doable because our basic skill have bonus attack speed and we also have lots of attack speed to get more energy. Now in terms of the defensive skill, we can go with Blood Hole. I don't have any points, so I went with level 1 Blood Hole, but later you can see you have a lot of blood, you have a lot of points to allocate. You can go into 4 stars or 5 points into Blood Hole, or you can go with more points into Wolves, so those are optional in the later stage of the game. So for Blood Hole, killing reduces the cooldown of Blood Hole by 1 second, and this is really good, right? The more you kill, the cooldown goes down, and you restore 20% of your life. On top of that, you also increase attack speed for 15%. So it's offensive, it's also defensive, and also have a much lower cooldown as you kill more enemies. So you can use this skill at the start of the fight, and then halfway during it, you can use it again. Now as for some of the passives, those are some of the passives that perk because I have more stats and more points. Now I can unperk all of those passives and get more skill points over here. So here we have non-physical resistance. And over here we have another skill that reduces damage taken after using a defensive skill. And this again comes back the blood hole will have a lower cooldown. Although it says 15 seconds, it can be down as to 10 seconds as you fight a pack of enemies. And because its attack speed duration is 4 seconds, so the downtime for Black Hole could be low as 5 or 6 seconds, and this provides you with bonus defense as well. Now coming over to the companion section of the skill choices, again, you can go with level 5 in Wolves, because there's a lot of passives that you might not have to need over here like those over here, if you don't need to be that defensive. So we can go with level 5 in Wolves or level 1 in Wolves. Ideally, you do want to get the upgrades, so the wolves will have increased damage against enemies who are slow, demobilized, and disabled. And over here we have ferocious, ferocious wolves. So you deal 10% increased damage to your wolf's focus target. So when you activate the spell, the wolves will focus on target, and this allows your damage to be increased. Now of course, if you are lacking a source of vulnerability, I do recommend taking vulnerable as well. So when the wolf focus attack our enemy, they will take vulnerability, they will become debuffed. And vulnerability increases enemies taken damage taken by 20%. So it is your choice to go always to go 10% increase damage on enemies, or you can go with a 20% increase on damage for the first two seconds. Now over here, by picking the wolf companion, you have some very good bonus. And over here is that we deal another 24% increased critical strike damage while the wolves focus on the target. And this is especially good, because we also have skills that allows wolves to focus more on the target. So if you guys remember here, is that when we critical hit, we reset the wolf's focus cooldown. And this can happen very often, because we'll be quitting a lot of the time. Now moving over to the wealth section of the skill build. A lot of the skills here will focus on earth and also lightning spells. And some one of them will focus on the werebear for the durability and also crop control. And those passives are kind of not the focus of the DPS critical druid for the melee build. 
So we'll go with rabbits. Rabbits give us a bit of AoE damage in terms of damage over time, and this allows us to also shift shift into the werewolf, which we want to be in the werewolf state to gain benefits with the shift shift. Now rabbits also increase poison damage when it affects a more than four targets, and also it heals you for 10% maximum life. So again, lots of healing, lots of damage, and a bit of AoE. Now over here, as you critical land on Werewolf skills, you can also deal increased damage about 24% in a base damage in the form of poison. And if you do happen to have one spare point, you can go with this neurotoxin. So poison enemies are slowed for 8%. And if you guys remember earlier, if you also perked into higher levels of wolves, so wolves will deal 20% more damage when enemies are poisoned. So if you're going with high level of wolf, you definitely want to poison slow enemies. And this allows you to do more damage, and those cooldowns get reset as well as a critical hit. Now as for the ultimate skill of a jeweled build, Lacterate is a skill that is very similar to like if you guys have played, you know, some like super slash games, there's like Blade Master in Dota 2 who or mini slashes many times. So here you'll become immune. So you become invulnerable. And then you slash 10 times between enemies in a wide area. And this is actually very powerful. It's like a rogue skill, skill right? You do 420% damage up to, and you do 10 slashes. So the upgrades allows you to deal critical strike heals you for 3% maximum life. Again, you know, you already heal for 3% maximum life with animal bond, and there's another 3% here. So you heal a lot with ultimate. You also deal lots of damage and also become invulnerable. So it's like a protection spell as well. And finally, the final strike will do 200% more damage. And yeah, it's pretty powerful, right? So it is definitely an interesting spell. And this spell is like a one button no brainer. And the cooldown is about 50 seconds. So it's okay for ultimate. Now, another choice we could have is that we can go into the wear bear stage, wear bear form to gain damage reduction and also bonus damage. Now, because we're not going to the wear bear that much, so I didn't pick that one. And ideally, this will provide us with multiple slashes, which will come to the cornerstone or the capstone. So let's jump over here, then we we'll go back to the passives. Now, the capstone for the druid, I have decided to take Lupin Ferocity. So every six attack in a werewolf skill hits critical strike, and this deals another 60% increased damage. This is massive. Because the 60% damage multiplier, and every six attack is guaranteed to crit. And this is one of the reasons this can be 100% crit build. You have so much crit with passives, with animal links, and also with skill perks, and then every six attack guaranteed to crit. On top of that, when you are critting with Lactarate, if you happen to crit on the last attack, this also increases damage by another 200%. So you enjoy all the critical multipliers when you crit your poison enemies, and also when you crit on this spell, you do 200% more damage and 60% more damage. It's pretty good, right? Now we could also pick the one over here with Bistol Rampage. If we go with Werewolf, we get increased attack speed. And if we go with Werebear, we get increased damage. Both are 20%. If you have a form for Werebear, you can benefit on this as well. So if I were to go with Bistol Rampage, I can make more use of this particular passive. So Quick Shift means that if you're going to different forms with Shift Shifting, you'll be gaining 15% damage increase for that particular form of spell. Because we only go with Werewolf, we can't make use of this spell too much. So ideally, you can just go with one point. I did with three points to show you guys. So ideally, we can come back over here, get more points in slow, or if you can come over here, get more points into the wolves. And followed by that, Natural Ferocity means we get more durability. So when we shift shift, we'll fortify maximum HP. And also, up on shift shifting into a Werewolf, we also gain damage reduction from Elites. Just a bit of defensiveness. If you don't need that, if you you know just want damage, or if you're very durable, you don't have to go for this. And similarly, we have more points to fortify and also more durability. So increase fortify amount by 9%. And also over here, this is actually really good. So 15% chance when we are hit, we get fortify for 1.67% base life. So notice that we get a lot of fortify. We have lots of life still, and we're very durable. So this is the highlight of the Druid. You're durable, you hit fast, and also your critical hit, your heals, and also you're very powerful in terms of your critical hits. So coming over to the Codex of the Druid build. Now I don't have to mention some of the usual ones that I have talked about before, because most of the build, I think those are good for most of the build. We'll go with the Druid special ones. 
So for the Skinwalker, if we have multiple shift shift, this is even better. But if we only have one shift shift for the Werewolf, this might not be great. So when you shift shift, you gain life. And if you get full life, you gain fortify. So this is definitely optional, if you guys want this or not. And after that, we have the Stalking Beast aspect. This is for the Shred ability. Now what that means is, we want 100% crit right, we have lots of critical damage increase. If Shred kills enemies, then we become stealth. And if we attack again, we gain ambush, which guarantee critical for one second. And if you cast your ultimate spell during this one second, you could attack multiple times. And this guarantee most of your critical hit with your ultimate is also, you know, guarantee crits and also heals you multiple times. And also we can go with vicious, ferocious aspect. So while we're shifting, shifting into a werewolf, we always get 10% damage reduction. And this is pretty much constant. Now coming over to the offensive aspects, we can go with the Nightmare Hollow aspects and this will just give us another 5% bonus critical chance when we do Blood Hole. And this also combined with increase of 15% attack speed, which is really good. And this also gives your companions and also other players the same buff. The Shepherd, Shepherd's aspects allows us to deal additional damage with a core skill. Currently we have two wolves activated. It is likely we can have other companions that will be activated, and this allows us to do more damage with Shred. And this allows Shred to kill enemies and also guarantee us to have a critical hit. We also have Aspect of Retaliation. Now you notice earlier we can gain increased damage on the core skill, and there's a lot of abilities that gains Fortify. So based on the Fortified, we gain more damage for its offensive, and the core skill will be essential to do more damage. Now in terms of resource, I was thinking of going with Aspect of Unsatisfied, Unsatisfied. <laughs> so after killing enemy Shred, again we're going with Shred, right? The next Werewolf skill generates 200% more spirit and also deal 20% more damage. And this is good. You can even use Shred first, then gain the 100% crit by going with, you know, Ambush. And then for the next one second, you guarantee the crit, you gain 20% increased damage, then you cast your ultimate and finish the boss off. And finally, I don't think there is a perk I want to go with utility. Then so with mobility, we definitely go with the wind strike aspect, very similar to the 100% crit rogue. We'll go with more crit and also more movement speed. And this is a freebie for us. We just get 8% movement speed for this mobility skill on mobility codex. Now, before we finish the video, let's quickly have a look at the build of the Druid for level 25 and the possibility of three Reno. So level 28 with the skill points. We still go with one point in Claw and also the same perks. We go with five points in Shred. Now, the Predatory Instinct, it's nice to have Critical Strike. I would like to go with more points in this, but we just don't have skill points. So only two points here. You can change Shred, you can do it this way too. And coming over here, one point in Blood Hole and also its upgrades. So going over to Companions, we go with one point in Wolves and also three points, or two points over here. Again, we can reduce the Call of the Wild and also increase the skill point over here. The Call of the Wild again will give us increased critical strike damage. So you want critical chances, you also want critical strike damage. <laughs> and as for wealth, we go with one point in rabies and also the upgrades for that. Finally, with ultimate, we try to perk as many points as we can with ultimate. So notice that we'll be level 25 or level 24. So we take away some of the passives, you'll be level 24 over here. And then you get this, you'll be level 25. And then 26, 27, and if you have 28, you can go here or you can go with higher critical, right? So this is the optional build, and unfortunately, guys, we do not have any of the spirit animals for the open beta for level 25. So it was mentioned that the, the mechanics will not be available in the open beta because this will be available in a different zone. We only have factor peaks, and we can't get the juridic zone for the animals, which is quite sad. So we can't test anything for the beta. Now before you go, and if you guys didn't know, we have a new YouTube channel. So I just started a YouTube channel with my girlfriend yesterday, and you can see this is only 12 hours old, this YouTube channel. And if you guys haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe and check out the behind the scenes and also fun clips and also more stories about us. And then you get to know me a little more personally, instead of just reading the news and also the games, right? So I want to share a little bit more with you guys. So make sure you check this channel out if you're interested about Matt and also Uni. She's really funny too, and she's really shy, so I want to give her a surprise and do a shout out for the new channel to get some subscribers. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'll see you guys next time.